before I forget, I wanted to ask you this. With Ramos gone, and then there's you know reports that Varan might not come back next season, and if you don't end up signing Pau Torres or Kunde, you're going to get in this position where it's like, you know, who are we going to rely on if something happens? Victor Chust, or is there better in Castilla? Like, what should we be expect? Who's the guy that we we'd mm. want to be calling up? It's, that is a really interesting topic because I don't think Victor Chust has ever been amongst the very best um, centre-back prospects Castilla have or even the academy have um, to date. Um, he's got a lot of opportunities and his last year has been hugely successful for him. But players like Pablo Ramon have got such a high ceiling. I remember on one of the Castilla Corner episodes, we interviewed the Getafe under-19s coach um, or a former one and he picked, he hand-picked Pablo Ramon out as a player that was playing a very different game to everyone else on that pitch. Um, he hasn't particularly shown it, but I'm not going to judge anyone based on this last weirdly structured COVID season that's just been strange for everyone. Um, so I still would select Pablo Ramon as a, a player with a huge ceiling in terms of a first-team career or a career at high level. Um, I really like Mario Gila as well. I think at the moment he's the victim of that uh, favoritism selection problem where if you're in, you're in. If you're not, the look-ins are going to be very slim for you. Um, but every time I've seen him, I've been just incredibly imp- uh, impressed with both of his seasons. So those two centre-backs for me, hugely, hugely strong, young, talented players. Um, I don't think Victor Chust is necessarily the answer. I think he stepped up uh, during the first team call-ups. During the, he was great for Castilla during the season as well. Um but I would look elsewhere rather than Victor um, for a potential first team center back. Yeah, I think Gila is uh, kind of the guy that doesn't get any of the hype. But mm. um, I think having listened to you guys on Castilla Corner and watching some of the games and reading some of the reports, it, it seems like he probably had the best season of all three of them uh, yeah, last year. Yeah. And I think there was a report with, with Marca, but I don't know how. Uh, trustworthy this particular report was but they were saying that Ancelotti uh, likes Tila and that he's going to be on the preseason tour and that wow. he wants to take a look at him so we'll see um, that would be good but yeah I think he's the one maybe people haven't really thought about or talked mm. about and might be worth just keeping an eye on he's been so impressed that first season with Castillo was just excellent excellent we've seen centre-backs like Mario Hermoso have seasons similar to that um I would say Jose Leon Philip Lionheart that the, the I've just kicked on apart from Jose Leon and just managed to make and carve out their own type of career um, away from the club, unfortunately, but at a standard that you would think perhaps they could have done something at Real Madrid as well. Jose Leon, I, I, told, I totally forgot about that guy. What? <laughs> oh, he's, at, he's at Alcorcon now. <laughs> I think 26. he moved to uh, Tenerife today. I think he got a transfer oh, wow. on Twitter. Um, so second vision, but... Um, he was a player that could have easily played at top level, especially with the performances in Castilla. I was almost confused as to why he was a Castilla player and not like, uh, uh, like he's clearly it. like 30 years older than everybody else there. Like he has a huge full grown beard. Yeah. And he played like it. He played like he was out, which is a compliment. Um, but yeah, you are right. He was very mature in many, many ways. Beard at 16 or whatever. <laughs> so do you think <laughs> that uh, like the Victor Chus thing, is that, can that be extended to other players? Like when we, when Zidane was pl- was calling up Castilla players last season, did you ever feel like a bit of confusion as to like, wait, hold on a sec, mm. this is not the best mm. player we have in that position. Huh. Why is he calling that up? Like, is what? Who are the other Victor Chus that were that were it's, being called? It's up? always there is always um, players on this kind of wavelength on this level of of the club absolutely adores them. Perhaps they've been at the club since they were very very young. Um, they know a lot of people. They know the right people. Um, and I don't want to use the word favoritism because Victor Chus is talented. He's a good player and he warrants yeah. a couple of the opportunities he gets. Um, but there are certainly players on that level, where I think, perhaps if they looked elsewhere in that exact Castilla squad, they would find a better solution. Um, on that wavelength with Chus, I would say, I don't know if this is going to be controversial, I'd say Antonio Blanco gets an awful lot of recognition and hype um, that is not necessarily unwarranted. His ceiling is very high. Um, but in terms of performance, it hasn't been just uh, necessarily to say, oh, he's going to be our next Casemiro. I've seen a lot, a lot of comparisons that I think are completely mm. out of the water. They're completely um, or he's different going to be the next, Yeah, exactly. A next first team um, dependable, I would say. I think people look at him as a dependable first team future player. Um, for now, I haven't seen that. But 
you can see that it's in it's within his potential. Um, but I would say he's definitely a lot of the opportunity he gets are on on that kind of favoritism wavelength where um, we need to kind of push him towards that first team rather than watch him earn it and flourish within Castilla and then get that promotion after. Um, that would be one. I like the fact that Marvin got a lot of opportunities this season. I'd say the same with a rebass. Hugo Jura obviously played a couple of times. It looks like he won't be back, unfortunately. Um, perhaps, yeah, Miguel Gutierrez, I would say another one. Those three, another unbelievably talented player. The thing with Miguel is that I think he looked better with the first team than he did with Castilla. He had a, a superb few games. I was watching it. I was in disbelief because we just hadn't seen that at all. Right. With Castilla. So those three definitely got opportunities based on other factors than performance. Um, whether it's just or not, I don't know. But Miguel, I think, could quite easily, I'd be happy if he got promoted based on that stint. That's a, it's a common phenomenon, right? Where like players mm. just look better outside yes. of Castilla than they yeah. do actually. Like, I mean, like Regulon, sure. Regulon mm. was a huge <laughs> case of that. I mean, it's like, it's not that he was bad sure. at Castilla, but he Oscar wasn't that. Rodriguez. Yeah, Oscar is maybe the best one because Oscar, yeah. he had so many opportunities with Castilla. He started. Um, and other than his dead ball ability, where he gained most of his numbers, his goals and assists, I didn't see much at all. I think there was one game where I thought, oh, he's very, very talented. And he's gone to La Liga and he carries a Liga team to survival and then joins Sevilla the, a couple of years later. Um, but I guess if you if you go back and watch the Antonio Blanco performance um, against Osasuna, I think either we published one or one of the Madrid Twitter accounts did. Um, you could count the amount of times he was pressurized by the other team on one hand for, for the whole game. Mm -hmm. um, and that is such a different scenario and environment as it's going to be where you're not only pressurized, you're probably just fouled and you're brought down and they're going yeah. to use any dodgy tactic to try and alienate you and get you away from your, your game. Um, so yeah. in that way, La Liga is suited to these technical, talented, high, high potential players a lot more than it's going to be. Um, and it's not surprised when all of a sudden you're stepping up next to Modric and Casemiro and Tony Cruz and all these world-class players that you are then going to take it as your own and, and really fly with that. Yeah. The Cadiz game was a classic example of that too because Antonio Blanco played against Cadiz was awesome. Mm. And, uh, you know, Cadiz just didn't put pressure on him. And, if you know, you know, it's not to, that's not to take credit away from him. He played well, no. but yeah, it's, it exactly. is, you're, you're right. It's a valid point. Like in, in Segunda Bay, they're just coming for your knees. <laughs> like that's, that's how it works. <laughs> I've seen all sorts of bites, pulls, everything. Yeah. Um, and they and they can flourish from that. And I think it's a really big learning curve. I like the fact they're in that league. I prefer it to be the second division. But I think Castilla has, and I've, it's been proven that it has a huge place within the club and, and what the club stands for. And it's setting the foundation for future teams. Um, but yeah, you can see why some players maybe shy away into going to be and then a year later look amazing at the top level.